So along with the new A7C Mark II, Sony have also released this. This is the A7C R. And while it is very similar to the A7C II, both in terms of how it feels to actually hold and use, and in terms of a lot of the spec, this is designed, at least it feels this way, a little bit more towards photography-minded users. And absolutely, the key spec here is a much higher resolution. We're talking 61 megapixels, so similar to things like the A7R5 and the A7R4. And that makes this a little bit more professional feeling and a little bit more geared towards certain types of usage for different photography as well. Of course, it does have some great video features in here as well, a little bit like the A7C Mark II, and you can use this as a hybrid camera, but because of that slightly higher resolution, because the camera feels geared a little bit more towards that, it does feel a little bit more photography-minded. So let's get into it, let's talk about it, and we'll talk about what I like and what I don't like. Now, before we go any further, I'll just say I've got this one in black. I've been using this for about three days. I think it looks nice in black, but I do love the silver, and you can see both of those cameras by following the links down in the description to go and check them out. I do just think the silver looks really, really good, but that really is just a personal preference. In terms of the key specs, obviously the main headline feature here is 61 megapixels. That is a lot of detail, a lot of resolution. You can crop in a lot with that. That's gonna make it great for things like landscape, maybe even street photography, where you wanna be focused more on the timing and actually capturing the moment and then maybe even crop and reframe later. Travel photography, this is gonna be great for, again, a little bit like the A7C Mark II. You've still got things like the new processor, the new Barnes XR processor, which is much, much faster and allows more kind of processing speed and power in the camera, which is great. And of course, the advancements with things like autofocus, so better subject recognition, the AI features that we've seen in the ZV-E1, the A7R5, which are in here, which make, again, subject recognition very fast and very precise but also allow things like auto framing in video which is a really nice feature where the camera will kind of crop in and follow you around as it kind of follows you as the subject or whoever is the subject so you can get some slightly more dynamic looking footage better image stabilization in this than in the previous kind of a7c and stuff like that where we're now up to seven stops of is which is great. That makes things like handheld video a lot easier, but even using a slower shutter speed to actually take your shots. If you're shooting a low light, actually the low light performance is really nice on this camera, but you can use a slower shutter speed to just let more light in. But let's get into a little bit of the, you know, what makes this camera kind of stand out. So obviously just like the A7C Mark II and the A7C, this is a nice small lightweight camera. That's kind of the main point, I guess, of the of the A7C range. And then this camera in particular is the higher resolution version. The images look really, really nice. Whether you're shooting portrait, landscape, you know, out and about doing street photography, whatever it is, it performs very, very well. I mean, you're talking about a full frame camera here. So the full power of a camera that feels a little bit like the A7 IV, but with some of those other features from the A7R5 and the ZV-E1 kind of added in, but in the body of what feels like an APS-C camera, but just very, very comfortable to use as well. You can probably tell I've actually really enjoyed using this camera a lot. And in terms of photography, you have the option to do things like lower the image quality so that you're actually using fewer megapixels. So if you don't want such a massive file size, if there's no reason to be shooting at 61 megapixels, you can absolutely do that with this camera. But otherwise, things like the detail in the images is fantastic, as you'd probably expect. And like I mentioned before, low light performance was better than I thought it was going to be, considering the high megapixel sensor. I was shooting this around sunset and then a little bit after sunset as well, and I was really impressed by how it was able to perform. Now, because of that slightly higher resolution, this is a little bit slower in terms of the continuous shooting speed than the A7C Mark II. So that's 10 frames a second. This is eight frames a second. I still think that's fine. And I think especially considering what this camera is capable of and what this camera is kind of aimed towards, I can't imagine that's gonna be a problem. Eight frames a second is still pretty fast, to be honest. And like I say, I, th I, think, I think that's absolutely fine. Much faster autofocus as well than the A7C. We're looking at much better subject recognition. So head, eye, face, and then human pose, which is really useful for portraits and taking photos of people doing street photography and all that kind of stuff. You really don't have to think too much about the autofocus on this. It'll just kind of take care of it for you pretty much all of the time. Sony autofocus is at a point now where it's just ridiculously good. And this is certainly no different. I mean, you've got obviously all the human subject recognition, but also that goes for animal, bird, plane, train, car, bike, insect. It really is capable of just handling that side of things for you. And that's in video as well, which is great. So subject recognition, but also subject tracking 
in video mode. And let's talk about video because this is definitely a hybrid camera, right? So it feels more photography focused, but there's some good video specs here as well. There's certainly no slouch. So 4K 60 frames a second, that's with a 1.2 times crop. Now, obviously it'd be nice to see that without a crop. Obviously that would be the ideal situation. You can use that to your advantage. I have used that myself to get more reach out of a lens, which is actually really useful. So as long as you think about it that way, it can be an advantage, but obviously if you want to shoot wider, it'd be nice to have no crop. And then 4K up to 30 frames a second, which is oversampled footage as well, which looks really, really good. That's shot at Super 35, so more like an APS-C crop on that. Again, it would be lovely if it wasn't cropped, but you know, that's how it is. Like I say, depending on the way you tend to shoot, I tend to shoot a little bit tighter than wider. So for me, it's not that big of a deal, but depending on how you shoot, it might be more of a deal for you. Also something really interesting about the A7CR is that it can actually do 16-bit raw output via the HDMI, which we didn't see on the A7C Mark II, which is interesting. So in some ways, this is actually able to outperform it slightly. A couple of other things that make this specifically stand out differently to the A7C Mark II, slightly better battery life on this camera, which is impressive considering we are taking, you know, higher resolution shots. We're also looking at 422 10-bit video, which is great. And you see things like HLG, S Cinetone, S Log3. So it is really capable in what it's able to do. And you're gonna have a lot of room to color grade and to edit and a lot of post-processing stuff that you can actually do with this camera, which I think is great. I think that's, you know, a lovely thing to have on what is definitely a hybrid system, even if it's geared a little bit more towards photography. And it can feel a little bit more geared towards a professional user. So even though it is that kind of nice, small, compact camera that you could take out and about with you wherever you go, it feels a little bit because that higher res and, and some of the usage cases like this is a little bit more, a little bit more pro spec. However, it is still just the one card slot in the side, which I know is probably going to upset quite a lot of people. I personally don't really mind that much. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. Even on my camera where it's two card slots, I, I just use the one card. I know it's outrageous, but I'm not shooting like a wedding. If I was shooting a wedding, I'd probably be a bit more concerned. Otherwise, the actual design of the camera, I think is really nice. I mean, they look great. I really do think these cameras look fantastic, which is important, right? Because you're spending a lot of money. You want you want something that's kind of a lifestyle thing as well. I, think, I, I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but I really like the look of this in my hands. And even though it is very small, it's very comfortable. The, the grip is, is kind of deep enough, and I have quite big hands, that it feels comfortable in the hands. The buttons are quite ergonomic as well. No joystick, which I mentioned on the A7C Mark II review as well. Understandable. I love a joystick, so it's always a shame when there's not one, but I get it because it's quite a small camera. So literally, where would you put it, I guess? But otherwise, the controls are great. I mean, you've got the new front dial as well, which is, which is fantastic. Flip out screen. And the viewfinder as well, which I didn't know if I'd like because it feels a little bit like on the APS-C cameras. It's off to the side. I wasn't sure I'd love it. Actually, I've really enjoyed using it. And I'm always a fan of that flip out very angle screen as well. I always think they're really useful for a lot of different things. Otherwise, connection wise, you've got things like headphone jack, mic jack, USB-C as well. Now, there's no USB-C cable in the box. And while that is a shame, we do probably all of us have at least one USB-C cable. I know I've got drawers full of them. So it's not really a problem, I guess, at this point. Most of us should have a USB-C cable lying around and you can just charge it from your computer or from whatever, really. And that's probably one of the more convenient ways to do it. I mean, I just plug my camera in to download the photos to my computer and then just leave it plugged in to charge. And it's pretty much always charged up, that means. Something which is included with the A7CR as well is actually this kind of bottom plate. Now it's not a battery plate, but it just screws on a little bit like this. And essentially what this does is just makes the camera feel a little bit deeper. Well, it doesn't feel a little bit deeper, actually. It just is a little bit deeper, if you look at that. And that helps. I noticed that it's about an extra finger, right, on that grip. So if you, if you just prefer the feel of that, and that does feel good, actually, that's something you can do. This camera, as well as the A7C Mark II, are probably two of my favorite kind of compact full frame cameras like this. I really, really like the size, the feel, the look of them, but with that power of a proper full frame Sony camera, right? With all the kind of things you would expect from that. Yes, I would love 4K 120 for the video side of things. And yes, I would love it if there was no crop, but I can absolutely live with that because I love the way this camera feels and the results that I'm getting from it, I'm really happy with it. So you've kind of got two great cameras there. The A7C Mark II, which I think is a fantastic all-rounder and feels more like a straight-up hybrid camera. And then the A7C-R, 
which is a little bit more photography minded. If you want that higher resolution, maybe you want this as a second camera to something like the A7R5. I think this would this would be fantastic for kind of those out and about trips. If you want to take this traveling, but you're you're skewed more towards getting some landscape shots, I think this is going to be this is going to be fantastic. And if you are looking for kind of a, a very small, lightweight, powerful camera, these two cameras are, yeah, they're the one they're they're. They're the ones I would recommend. I mean, let me tell you, I've, I've just really enjoyed using them. You can check out both of them, actually. The A7C R, the A7C Mark II, by following the links down in the description over to our website, parkcameras.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, because there's new stuff all the time. I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.